What's growing on, gardeners? It's Saturday, December 9th, and another year is coming to an end here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Mistakes we make in our garden this time of year have a ripple effect into the following season. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you the number one mistake that gardeners are making this time of year that they don't even know they're making that has huge negative consequences for their garden's productivity the following season. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. And that mistake is not protecting your garden soil from the harsh UV rays of the sun all winter long. Garden soil is not an inert growing medium. It is a collection of billions and trillions of microorganisms, bacteria and fungi, working in perfect harmony together to decompose organic matter and feed your plants. Living, thriving garden soil produces happy, healthy plants, whereas dead, sterilized garden soil produces poor quality results. Allowing your garden soil to bake unprotected by the sun all winter long is literally killing your garden soil. Now I know what you might be thinking. Why would I need to protect my garden soil during the winter time when the sun is weak? I don't protect my garden soil during the summer time when the sun is just absolutely miserable. Well, that's not actually true. You are protecting your soil during the summer and you don't even realize it. The normal pattern of gardening is this. We plant out our transplants in late winter or early spring. They grab hold in the garden soil and then they get big and strong in late spring and then they reach maturity at some point during the summer. That is typically what's going on. Well, what you don't realize that you're doing is when you start planting transplants out into your garden and the roots grab hold, those roots are actually creating a symbiotic relationship with the soil. So all of the bacteria and the fungi that are in the soil, they actually to a degree latch on to the roots of the plants and you start colonizing them so you're actually supporting the microorganisms within the soil. Then as the plants grow, they start shading out the soil. The soil underneath this garden bed right here is like the soil in a protected forest canopy. All of these broccoli leaves are like giant trees. So these plants are actually protecting the soil from the harsh UV rays of the sun. So you don't really realize that when you plant things out in late winter, early spring, and then they carry throughout the summer, the plants themselves are shading the soil and protecting the soil and actually colonizing the good beneficial microorganisms in the soil that you want to grow. So you're really supporting the colonies of the things growing and you're keeping them nice and cool and protected from the sun. That symbiotic relationship between the plants and the soil microbiome does not exist during the winter if you're resting your beds and nothing is actively growing in it. If you have all of your garden soil just sitting with nothing growing in it, all of the colonies of bacteria and the fungi basically have to overwinter in the soil with no hosts to cling onto and sustain the colony. And what is happening? All the UV radiation is just pounding on this soil for months and months bleaching and sterilizing it. So the top of your soil will basically turn into sand. I mean, look at this. We just got some rain, but the soil is mostly dry because it's sitting exposed to the UV radiation of the sun. Even though I just explained everything to you, you may still have your doubts. You may be thinking, I live at a very high latitude. Our sun is really weak. You just don't understand how weak it is. Well, do you really want to take that chance? I've shown you in years past how I love using milk jugs as greenhouses for my plants because it accelerates the growth by trapping in some heat. Well, this plastic has been sitting out since the fall and that's from the fall sun moving into winter. Now I hope that illustration that I just showed you really helps drive the point home because I have quite the mess to clean up on my hands right now. Just the UV radiation from the weakest sun and the shortest days of the year turns a milk jug container plastic into brittle glass. It just snaps. If you fail to protect your garden soil, your plants are going to be sluggish the following season because after you plan out your first few transplants, you are going to have to wait for that soil microbiome to recover for weeks or months before things start really taking off again. The good news is you don't have to suffer this fate. Protecting your garden soil is so easy that there's really no excuse to not do it. And now I'm going to show you exactly how you can protect your soil throughout the winter. 
The first way to protect your garden soil throughout the winter is to simply grow things in it. As I previously mentioned, because this bed is full of plants, all of the roots are being hosts to all of the beneficial bacteria and fungi in the soil. So it is creating not only a living microbiome, but it is helping it multiply grow. Even during the coldest months of the year, the microbiome in this bed is multiplying and growing larger. And it also has the benefit of shading out the soil. This is like a cover crop right here. Because the leaves of the cabbage and the mustard greens and the broccoli and the kale and all the wonderful things that I have growing in there are creating a forest canopy over the soil, it is protected from the harsh UV rays of the sun. And because of that, that is why this is the absolute best way that you can protect your soil during the winter. Now, if you can't or won't grow things out in your garden in the winter, the second best thing that you can do is cover it with a natural mulch. And there's really only two rules that you want to adhere to when you do this. Number one, rule number one, is that you want the mulch layer to be about two to three inches thick. That will provide enough of a layer that will protect the top layer of your soil from bleaching and sterilizing from the UV rays of the sun. The second thing you want to do is you want to be sure that you use an all all natural product. Now what you see in this bed right here is shredded hardwood bark mulch that I buy from big box stores. That is a great option to use as a natural mulch, but it is not a mandatory requirement. You can use any natural product. You can use chopped up grass clippings from your lawn. You can use a wood mulch. You can use pine bark nuggets. You can use wheat straw as long as you know that it isn't contaminated with some type of herbicides. You can use chopped up leaves from the forest that you can mulch with your lawnmower and then dump on top of your beds. You can use pine straw that you can rake from your yard if you have pine trees. You can get wood chips from the power companies or tree trimming services. As long as it is a natural product, that's really all that matters. What you don't want to use are things like dyed mulches from the big box stores because they're usually ground up old construction products and lumber that they dye with artificial dyes to make them look like the really wood when really it's construction scraps. You you don't want that in your garden. You also don't want to use rubber mulch or stone mulch because rubber mulch is usually industrial waste and chewed up tires, not something you want in your garden. You don't want to use stone mulch because there's no organic matter there and the decomposition won't be there to feed your soil. So it's important that you use an all natural mulch because you have to realize it's going to be breaking down and adding nutrients to your garden over the winter time. So that's good. And it's also going to protect your soil. Now, if you can't cover all of your garden soil with a natural mulch because it's either too physically taxing or you can't find an affordable enough source of mulch to meet your needs. The third thing that you can do is cover your garden soil with a tarp. Now while this is the least desirable thing that you can do because you won't get that added benefit of having all of that organic matter breaking down over the winter and refeeding your soil, it is better than nothing because at least by covering your garden beds you will protect the existing microbiome and you'll restart the new growing season in the late winter early spring with much healthier soil overall. Now I've made many videos in the past about tarping your garden during the off season and I've used this in tandem with multiple techniques. I like spreading kitchen scraps all over the top layer of my garden soil, putting compost on top of that, then adding mulch, then tarping my garden beds. That is a trick that I use to turn the garden beds over as quickly as possible because the tarp not only protects the soil but it traps in additional heat and it helps any organic matter that you do add to the soil break down more quickly. So you can use this method all throughout the year. I find that you can refresh your garden soil in only about 60 days doing this. I even use this technique in the summertime when I want to turn over a bed to plant a new crop in. But that being said, it is also a fantastic method simply for protecting soil during the winter that you're not going to grow in. The one bit of advice that I will give you is if you purchase a tarp to do this, make sure that the tarp is rated for UV rays. Some tarps are not UV resistant and I've used them in the past thinking I was going to save money and the sun breaks down the tarps and then I have nasty chunks of plastic all on top of my garden soil. Well now I only use UV treated, UV rated tarps and I don't have that issue. Most of the tips and recommendations that I made in this video are geared towards smaller gardeners and growers such as myself that grow and raise bed gardens. But what if you grow in an earth bed? What if you have 
acres and acres of farmland. Well, if you have a very large farm style situation, chances are you probably grow a cover crop on top of your soil in order to protect it with the intent to till it under a few months before you're going to actually grow in it in order to allow all that organic matter time to decompose. But what happens if you just have some pretty small standard size earth beds and you don't have acres and acres of farmland? Well, they make silage tarps that are 40, 60, 80, 100 feet long. So if you have pretty good sized earth beds that aren't acres of farmland, you can buy some pretty large tarps in order to cover the area. This is specifically helpful for people that are no-till gardeners since you won't have to grow a cover crop and disturb the soil by tilling anything under. Now before I end this video, I want to address one very specific subject. Can you use compost to protect your garden soil? I am going to say overwhelmingly no. Why do we bring in compost into our garden? Well, it's not only a source of organic matter and nutrition for our soil, but it is also a source of new bacteria cultures and beneficial fungi that we want to bring in. If you place a layer of compost down on your soil right now and let it sit all winter long, that compost is going to get bleached and sterilized by the sun. So you are going to be putting down a very expensive cover only to have that microbiome destroyed. In my opinion, and you're wasting your money. Also, the compost is going to be exposed to months of weathering. So all of the nutrition in that compost that is mostly finished and broken down, you will be washing that out of your soil over time. So if you do like to add compost to your garden this year, I would recommend that you cover it well with a tarp to protect the microbiome that you just brought in, as well as prevent any nutrients from washing away. If you won't protect it with a tarp, at least cover it with mulch to try and prevent erosion and to protect exposure from the sun. Now that being said, me personally, I don't add compost to my garden beds until I'm 30 to 60 days away from planting in it. Sometimes I only use compost at the exact moment that I'm planting in my garden. Compost is a premium product. It is expensive. If it's finished, it is already ready to go. It doesn't need a long time to sit on top of your soil. And that right there is the number one mistake that many gardeners are making over the winter time and how to prevent it so you start off the year with healthier garden soil when it comes time to plan out your transplants. If you follow the tips in this video, your soil will start out in a healthier position and your plants will be more likely to take off the following growing season. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they will all be linked down below in the video description in my Amazon storefront. So expand the video description, click on the Amazon link and you'll see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Wow, Dale, look at all the geese in the pond today. Have you ever seen such a thing, buddy? Those are Canada geese and they're everywhere. Look at that. Wow, it is a chilly late November morning and we're taking Dale for a walk in his festive Christmas sweater. We are all set for the holidays, right buddy?